Hey Mel, here Hi. we go again. So you wanted to tell us more about the first novel truth and how it relates to our current crisis with COVID-19. Okay, thank you. Yes, um, uh, in the Buddha's first sutta, um, the sutta called the turning of the wheel of Dhamma, uh, that he um, gave to the five ascetics, he gave a complete and detailed description of Dukkha, um, this first noble truth. And basically he said, um, the difficulties associated, well, actually he said the arising of things with birth, aging, sickness and death is Dukkha. Mm -hmm. Sorrow, pain, grief, lamentation and despair is Dukkha. Getting what we don't want, not getting what we want and being parted from that which is dear to us is Dukkha. In fact, clinging to what we call the self and what Buddhists call the self is five aggregates of form, feelings, perceptions, mental formations, and consciousness, these, these experiences. Clinging to these experiences as something solid, lasting, permanent, and, and uh, independent, as, and also a source of enduring happiness. Clinging to those ideas about the self is Dukkha. So, I mean, it's pretty, uh, uh, a broad spectrum of possibilities ranging from the gross and severe right down to the very subtle. So with COVID-19, what we have is this whole spectrum of Dukkha. And I, I, I guess I can't really go into details about all the Dukkha that's involved in uh, COVID-19 because it's a bit like talking about the Dukkha involved in war. And as I know there's been an analogy uh, of us going to war against COVID-19 and the suffering in war that we see in war is multi-layered and multi-dimensional and uh, subtle and gross. There's so much that we can talk about with the suffering of war. And similarly, there's so much we can talk about with the suffering of COVID-19. Firstly, there is illness and death. Uh, and I was reading the stats. I was reading the stats before, and I, um, as of the third of April, and these these stats are changing daily. They're, they're still growing exponentially. Um, just on Friday, two days ago, or three days ago, I think there was an uh, over a million diagnosed cases of COVID nineteen. There were nearly three thousand people had recovered. Uh, 300,000 people had recovered, sorry. And there had also been about 54,000 deaths as a result of COVID-19. This illness, uh, so though some people can be symptomless and some people have mild symptoms, the, the symptoms of this illness are uh, a dry cough, uh, fevers and respiratory complaints. It's a, it's a SARS virus, like severe acute respiratory, uh, severe acute respiratory syndrome, I think is the, uh, the translation of SARS. It's a SARS virus, so it affects the lungs. And uh, I think what happens is, you know, we set up all these immune responses and eventually we become infected with a bacteria and pneumonia is developed and people die from pneumonia. So it's quite unpleasant, obviously. Um, and the people, the people who have the illness, uh, people who have survived the illness, I, I've, uh, I've recovered from the illness, I should say. I've heard it being compared to, uh, as being quite severe, like quite heavy. Um, in compa compared to the way we experience malaria, for example, that was what one example I heard. So just having the virus is dukkha. Um, and then there's all the repercussions of the virus. Um, the, the repercussions include social isolation and the restrictions, social isolation, um, uh, economic collapse, loss of work, um, and us being 
being separated from what we normally find as our, uh, that gives us pleasure and gives us enjoyment and gives us social connection. So just some of this um, is related to the, isol the isolation aspect. And I, I was sadly looking at um, some video clips of news in Italy where there were, you know, Italy, they're very touchy people and they really like to, there's a lot, a lot of fa strong family values and they're around each other uh, a lot, especially when they're suffering from illness and disease. The sad thing about this, in this case, was that people were dying, old people are dying and they're being unable to be with their loved ones when they die because of social restrictions. And um, we could say, oh, well, there's social media, but a lot of the people who are vulnerable, such as the elderly, aren't really so uh, familiar with social media. So they're, they're dying and they've been going through all this suffering alone. And so for people who don't have, who aren't diagnosed with the illness or um, don't have this illness, we have these social restrictions and that very, very fact of being socially isolated is a trigger for depression and anxiety. Um, I know some meditators have said, um, well, this is a wonderful opportunity, you know, the social isolation, um, not social isolation, social distancing, you know, the request that we stay at home and don't go out and um, stay distance from people. It's a wonderful opportunity to uh, have a retreat. And, um, and I, I, I had that thought myself. I also know, however, that when we go on retreat, it's quite difficult psychologically. And as a Buddhist, I fortunately had training to deal with those psychological um, disruptions. You know, we can call them our demons coming up uh, as they represent, as they, as they get manifest in our mind when we're retreating. So even for meditators, even for very experienced meditators, to be socially, to be socially isolated and alone is quite difficult. So what happens with people who don't have that training and people who are, uh, already have a, a mental illness or uh, mental disorders or something like that? What happens with the social isolation? <coughs> the pre-existing conditions can be exacerbated and we don't have the training to uh, deal with these. Uh, we don't have the emotional regulation trainings to deal with it. So there's a, quite a few concerns about that. Uh, the, other thing, the other thing that I've noticed, uh, what I've read in research, is that people who have been um, quarantined or isolated because of an of a epidemic, they come out of that experience often feeling stigmatised and um, isolated. And that predisposes them to be more prone to developing depression, anxiety, and um, and stress and other and stress like uh, developing post traumatic stress disorder. So other ways other ways that we're suffering is just with this economic collapse. People are losing jobs. The whole of the uh, entertainment industry, the uh, hospitality industry, and the uh, what other industries are? Can you think of? There was another industry out there that's. Uh, Hospitality, travel, entertainment, those, those industries have completely grinded to a halt. All those people are out of work. And if you think of our, our well-being and our sense of self, our, our esteem is often reliant on what we do in the world. All these people are without that um, foundation. A lot of people are wondering what to do with their mind. I'm wondering what to do with themselves. They're, they're losing their meaning in life. So this is another form of suffering. And yet another form of suffering, and excuse me, I mean, I'll just take a mouthful of water. <coughs> it's not a dry cough. Not yet. <laughs> um, even people who are, uh, even people who are, normally quite healthy and, and so on. We're unable to do our usual uh, sense of connection with our friends and uh, go out when 
unable to go to the cinema, we're unable to go to the pub, we're unable to go to the restaurants and cafes. And our friends provide our um, very support. In fact, feeling socially connected or being socially connected is uh, one of the ways we balance our emotions. Uh, there's three cycles, or three circles that you, I'm sure you're aware of. There's the safety, uh, safety uh, threat circle. There's the um, uh, resource development and uh, reward circle. And there's the um, human connection and uh, rest and repose and recharge and recuperation circle. These very circles represent uh, emotional systems. And <clears throat> what's really important is the human connection. If we feel we don't have human connection, the, the other systems become out of balance. Um, the, threat, the threat survival system is based on um, balancing, balancing anger and fear and uh, anxiety and so on. If that's out of balance, it just expands beyond uh, what is healthy. <laughs> and also, uh, we may, with the, with the um, resource seeking sis, uh, system, the one that is based on rewards, that is about us thriving in the world, that can either go in either direction, in either extreme towards addictions or, um, or lack of motivation with depression. So, The case of COVID-19, with all its restrictions, is causing a lot of dukkha. And uh, I think there's so much I could talk about with that, but I'll just leave it at that for the moment. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mel. You've uh, given such a detailed um, expression to the layers, the many layers that we may not be aware of. and. Um, there is quite a lot to consider, especially for us as uh, people in the mental health um, arena, but also everyone. This affects everyone. So we're all in the same boat, this Dukkha boat that um, brought on by this uh, new virus that we're all uh, finding ways with. So um, thank you for talking more about the first novel truth and COVID-19 and in our next video we'll be talking about the second novel truth. So I see you in a minute. Thank you.